that's how, what I feel is the most important thing in programming is, sure, I can teach you what a, what a function is. Sure, I can teach you what, a, I can teach you a cool feature about template metaprogramming and yada yada, but why? Why right. is it there? What is it doing for you? And what problem is it solving for you? Hello, everyone. In this episode of the Fika Sessions, we sit down with senior programmer Olaf Boge to learn all we can about programming. Hi, Olaf. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to have you here. You are? Yes, I'm super happy. I'm super excited. Wonderful to be I'm, here. I'm not supposed to move like this because that will piss off Ella. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, doing well. okay. I'm doing well. You, you well, this is all my fault. And um, I brought this. This is a smear day with uh, Pekanhnetur. Yep. So you bought this. I, I actually bought it. Yeah. But you wanted something else. You wanted something more. Yeah, I wanted the thing. Kind of Icelandic? Well, there's two things. There's a thing called snuder, mm -hmm. which you in Sweden kind of have, which is like a, a, a cinnamon bun, but it's bigger, softer, and has like a chocolate thing right. on top of it. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of like, I think America has it, like with the Cinnabon. It looked very American, the, the yeah. image you sent over. This is kind of like what Iceland sometimes is. is they kind of want to be American, they kind of want to be European, like best of both worlds. Yeah. Uh, and then fail, fail at both. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then we talked about uh, Wienerbrot also. Yeah, which that is, we have. Yeah. That I could have gotten. You could have gotten. I, but I got but this. But you didn't. I, you didn't. This looks super tasty. It was uh, marked down in your notes. Yeah. yeah. It was just an oblong shape of yeah. that. That was important. <laughs> well, those are good. Uh, so uh, jumping from the FICA, yeah. um, you work here at Massive as a I senior do. programmer. I'm a senior programmer. Yes. What On a top level, we'll get into the nitty gritty yeah. later on, but what does a senior programmer do? It just means you have more responsibility of parts of systems or parts of the parts he's working on. Right. It of course depends on how big the team is. If the team is very big, then having a seniority might even mean like you're above someone. Sure. Uh, not always the case. Uh, and then it's a really big team, the, the part you have control over or control over may, might not be that big. And right. if it's a smaller team, then the thing you like are more responsible for might just be the whole system. Yeah. Like in my case now is like I'm the senior programmer on that team, but I'm responsible for basically a lot of the stuff yep. in the system. Yep. Yeah. We'll get back to the, as I said, mm -hmm. the nitty gritty later on, mm -hmm. but I just want to know, first of all, how did you get started uh, in your field of expertise? So program? I didn't want to be a programmer. That was the kind of the, the big the, thing. <laughs> the end of the show. The, the programmer who didn't want to be a programmer, well, not, not initially. I mean, I've always been the, the computer geek sitting playing Nintendo and, and then when that was taken away from me because I played too much. I was like, mom and dad are a banker. They have computers at home. This is the mid 80s. So it's an old IBM sitting there. So let's just type on the keyboards and see what happens. There's a little snake game or whatever. And then I break the computer because I play with settings and because it's DOS, so you can just do whatever you want. Yeah. Then I have to learn how to fix it. And so they, they're like, oh, we don't want to have him break the computer. So let's give him a hand-me-down computer. and He can break that one as much as he wants. Did you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I would, I would be the annoying kid that called the hotline at like seven, like, hi, my computer is broken. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't work. But like, but I like games and I like the computer. So that was kind of the hobby when I was younger, that and uh, soccer or football. football yeah. Yes. Um, we have the real football in Europe. <laughs> real football. Uh, but I didn't want to be uh, a programmer. A friend of mine was kind of the more into the tech part of it, and I never, I just sometimes go him, to him and visit him, and like, I wouldn't understand what he was doing. He was doing something like, can we, can we play Street Fighter? <laughs> can we play Mario? <laughs> like, uh, in a minute, we're looking at something. Okay. Uh, but I was interested in, uh, I well, still am interested in, in people and their behavior and, and how they interact with things. So I thought like journalism is kind of an interesting thing. Yeah. So there was a school for journalism in Iceland, uh, or it's like a journalism track uh, in, in that sense. So I was like, okay, let's do that. Let's do journalism. Let's learn that. Let's uh, go that direction, basically. So And they also had a... Um, half a year in web because web journalism was a thing that was starting 
Like we're we're talking early two thousands here. Like this is two point oh. No, no. This is this is HTML when you couldn't put an image next to another image. Right. Uh, and I also learned like how to trace on like a light table and yeah, it's <laughs> I'm showing my age a little bit. <laughs> Um, but it was fun. I, I went to that. There was some programming there, but I didn't wasn't that interested in it. But I did it. There. But you made a website for your Counter Strike clan. As yeah. Well, right? So I played a lot of games, and I played a lot of Counter Strike, one point six, <laughs> yes, represent. And I played uh, played that a lot. And the clan was like, "Hey, we need we need a web page." And a friend of mine was like, "Hey, I'll do the graphics." And I'm like, "I'll do the other stuff, <laughs> whatever that is." And then I realized, like, oh, that's a lot of programming. Because they wanted, I thought, like, hey, I know this HTML stuff from yeah. school. I can make up a thing. And they're like, no, we need, like, a, a blog. Because every clan needs a blog, of, right? Of course. Of course. Important news all the time. They're read you need the, to share everybody the reads the blog. And so, like, oh, no. Um, uh, Googling, no, maybe Alta Yeah. How, how, how to blog. <laughs> make, make blog interesting. Like, copying PHP 3.0 or 4.0. Code snippets and just seeing until it worked. Yeah, this is also before Stack Overflow, so that doesn't work. And uh, um, eventually, it worked. It took like a couple of weekends. We had a site, we had a blog. It worked, kinda. And I found it kind of interesting how I could, yeah, because at back then PHP was like a um, a pretty new language, or in that sense, kind of new, and it worked. So I was happy. And I was always like dabbling on the side, like, hey, I could do this. Hey, I can make a site like this. Hey, oh, what about what about that? What about this other thing? But my my brain was on more the journalism thing. Right. So doing, uh, I played uh, Darkest of Camelot a lot, and then I applied for one of their websites called the Vault Network, which yeah. is another old thing, uh, and I got in there, um, and I was writing daily articles about like what's going on in this MMO. And then when expansion packs would come out, I would write the reviews for those expansion packs and try to be like very professional. But I was always like programming on the side. And I was at that time working at an ISP in Iceland and trying to like programming on the side, programming on the side. And then after a certain point, um, a friend of mine said like, hey, the, there's this web company that's looking for people. I think you should stop being tech support and you should apply to this place. So it's like, I didn't even think about that. I go, huh, okay, let's try that. Because the, the journalism thing wasn't going anywhere, at least wasn't going. Games journalism, the way to riches. Way to riches, uh, for some people. Wasn't for me, <laughs> wasn't good enough probably. Um, so I applied to that uh, web design company with my PHP knowledge. They took me in and uh, after that, I was like, wow, programming is really cool. I really like it. You can like, make these pages that are used by a lot of people, and make these systems and all that stuff. But then after a point, I felt like there's no, I'm hitting a plateau again. Yeah. Like, where am I going? So uh, I thought I should go back to school. And this is like, what is it, 2008, 2009? Like, yeah, let's go back to university or go, go to university. Let's do programming. Yeah. Go computer science, go full in, let's do this stuff. So I did. I did a full bachelor's computer science, C++, <laughs> low-level systems, operating systems, yeah, all that stuff, databases. What was school like, like programming school? <sighs> so there was a, so I went to school where, because I didn't plan on going with someone. Right. And I was there at... Uh, What's it called, like freshman day or whatever? Everybody is coming together, like, hey, here's your your school buddies, and I see an old friend from the Counter Strike days. Like, hey, we haven't talked in a long while. So what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I'm going back to school, going to computer science. Like, you are kidding me. <laughs> and then we found uh, two others who were uh, we knew. So we made this little group, which grew a little bit more over the years, and we kind of made a pact of just teaching ourselves. Yeah. Or, like being each other's teachers as well. So we would basically every single day, no matter if we had class that day or not, or if like class was at early or whatever, we would go in, we would find a study room, sit down, like what's what's on the agenda? What do we need to learn today? It's this thing. Okay, who knows how to explain that? 
someone might say, I know it a little bit. Okay, here's a, here's a chalk, here's a chalkboard, go. Try to explain it to us. And then we'd sit there and yell at each other. And so we became each other's teachers as well. Yeah. So that helped us uh, a lot in, uh, in learning. And some, some said, like, we basically dragged each other through school. <laughs> we're like, we're, uh, like, if someone didn't know something, they would be like, no, come here, I'll sit, sit you down with this and we'll explain it. Yeah. So we tried to take like the classes together and, and that helped a lot. Uh, and many of these, these guys now are working at like big companies, yeah. two of them in Sweden as well. So. so how did you end up in partially at Massive and then of course in Malmo, which I guess it, those things are connected, but how did you end up in yeah, at Massive? Yeah, so, um, uh, so my daughter was living in Copenhagen and I wanted to move closer to her. So I thought like, hey, let's try to find a job in this area. So what would kind of be like the the crazy hire? What would be like the the thing I wouldn't get? Right. Let's apply for that one. And that was massive. Or? That was massive. I, uh, I applied to a lot of places and like no answer, not even. Right. And even with like uh, an experience and I had worked in the air traffic industry for uh, almost two years before that, that was all like Linux and C++. I learned a whole lot there. Um, yeah, it was like no answer, no nothing. I don't know what was going on there. Uh, but Master was like, yeah, yeah, we have a thing. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, there we go. Went through all the process and did like a Skype interview at first. And then I had an interview on site here or the other place. Yep. Um, and then uh, I got an email saying like, so uh, how did you like the company? Like, <laughs> this is the email. <laughs> like, yeah, that was it. All right. Nice. That's good. So... So what, what's a bit special with you uh, compared to other people that mm. we've interviewed is that you don't actually work on the games themselves. No, it's the, the funny thing is that like I have credits in a bunch of games, but I've never actually worked on a game. Right. Because I was on uh, Uplay. Yeah, because that's easy to forget as well. Like mm. you, you look at the games industry and like, I'm going to program games or I'm going to work on games. Yeah. But there's so much, like such a big, like, not going to say support structure, but there's so many aspects. Well, you could. It. You mean you can you can call it a support structure because it's um, like the core of a game is the the engine and whatever is rendering or displaying the game and the audio and all that uh, that stuff, and then the gameplay is the, the mechanism to interact with the systems and the AI and all that. But that is that often the tip of the iceberg. Even though it is a very, very important part of the, the whole process, and a lot of people are important in the flow, um, but there are so many people behind the scenes. Like people often joke about, like, oh, the credits for these video games are so long. Most of these aren't the the the. If we talk about it as like the classical, like gameplay programmers or AI or engine or graphics or whatever, like most of them are like me. Yeah. Like. Where you're like, oh, what did you do? Ah, I worked on the download system for Uplay for a few years, or I worked on what it means to own a game and to scale that up and make that work well. Yeah. Something that nobody will actually see, or, well, they'll see if it doesn't work, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, right? Yeah, but most of the time it's invisible. And yeah. there are so many, like even with, with Uplay and all, all that backend, there's so much that nobody notices, but right. still it's so important. Um, so the whole team is, is is incredible, and there are a lot of programmers there that are doing uh, really interesting jobs. Yeah, yeah, because it's as you say, there there's so many people involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, behind everything, because it's just there, right? The game is just there, and you yeah. play it, but just making it actually happen, bringing it to your computer itself. Yeah, it's like even even things like downloading a game is immensely complex yeah and as soon as because people want the game to be as small as possible but also to be as rich as possible with high fidelity graphics and whatever right they also want the download to happen as fast as possible and when there's a patch they want the patch to be as small as possible um so we're always like there's this 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 push and pull of like how do you how would you make a game modular or easy to work with or like, okay, you could make some sort of system or, or, or file format to put all the data in. Okay, but the, how do you then patch that without knowing about every single file format in every single game because you you want to be generic. Yeah. 
because if you're if you make a download system, for example, if we go into that a little bit, that knows about every single file system, then okay, you could make a patching system that is really small, but then one mistake, or one error, or because then you have to basically maintain and support every single file system thing that's out there, yeah. which is an immense amount of work. So you want to be smart about what bit changed and what bit didn't change. Uh, and it goes from that the naive solution is pretty simple. The next solution after that is can be pretty complicated, but what is the naive solution? How do you find that? You just if it's if the file is different, replace the file. Right. But then that means that if it's a one file that is 80 gigabytes, it's just an 80 gigabyte download. Yeah. We don't want that. The next one is maybe you would slice the file down into chunks and check each chunk. But then if something shifts around, and as soon as you hit that point, you're into like PhD level computer <laughs> science stuff where you have to find a set of bits within another set of bits, right. where it is, how it's moved. Uh, My head is spinning. Go on. Like how big is it? Because it, it's just ones and zeros and you want to find what ones and zeros are not the same. Uh, so you would, let's say you would have 10,000 ones and zeros, as a, like a more simple example, and half of them changed and half of them didn't change. Okay, you just swapped them out. Yeah. But if half of them changed because you shifted them because you added 100 at the beginning, the, the first half is the same, it's just shifted. So if you did the slicing, like the Lego bricks, it looks like they're all different, right? But then it's just shifted, so you need to find where are those thousand in the thing. Oh, they're here, so you need to insert them correctly. Yeah. So in a system like that, when you're preparing for a download, and the game is a hundred gigabytes, you're looking for every single slice in every single. Yeah. So this yeah. this grows out. So this also is a problem where if the preparing for download is a thing that takes 30 minutes, yeah. do you then care if you need to download 10 gigabytes more? Some people do, some people don't. So yeah, it's, you see, the, it's the push and pull there. And I, I like, feel I'd like, just listening to you talk about these things, mm -hmm. like I, I'm really bad at this kind of stuff. So I probably didn't understand half of what you said, really. <laughs> but I just feel my inner smile. Just, I could listen to this stuff. I mean, even for even with ages. even with ownership, it's really tricky because what does it mean to own a game? Where did you buy it? People might have different packages, right? So you have this hierarchy of packages and ownership, and so what if you buy a bundle that contains a game you already own? So, but the bundle also contains a DLC you don't own, so we then need to attach the DLC to the ownership. But then you refund the bundle. We need to remember to remove that DLC from the game you already own, but don't right. remove the game because you own Yeah. <laughs> and then you need to check out like, what region did you buy it from? Is that correct? Did you move regions where this game isn't like available? Where there's a, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tricky. It's even with, uh, even with uh, consumables like uh, in-game currency, yeah. uh, where you're almost to the point of making a banking system because you need to, like you bought currency and then you maybe refund it, so you take the currency back, but you already spent the currency, so you can't count out to minus, because that wouldn't make sense in this sense. So it's... That's a lot. Yeah, it's it's very complicated. And uh, so yeah, these are just examples of, of what people do behind the scenes. Yeah. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of jobs out there, a lot of people doing interesting things, even though they're not the, the, the triangles or the AI or the, even though, they are absolutely important. Yeah. But it's how uh, how would a normal day, like normal day, yeah. for a programmer say you play or what you're doing now look yeah. like? Like I if mean, I come to work, yeah. what do I do? Coffee. Coffee, Co coffee checking your emails Co usually are the, coffee, the two check emails, ones. Say hi to people. It's yeah. the classic, classic thing. Uh, usually um, if it's a bigger team, there's a stand up yeah. of people like, hey, what are you working on? Is anything blocking you? What's next? Uh, and then someone might say like, hey, I, I'm working on a thing. Uh, like, oh, you're working on this and what's out for such and such or whatever. So people sync up and chat, and, but it shouldn't take too long. Um, and then either you're working on something already, so you just sit down and 
find where, where you were last. Or if you're picking up a new task, then there's usually a log of tasks you can pick from. Be like, oh, these are one of the new things. Or you can ask producers or associate producers or anybody who is like in charge of uh, organizing things. Uh, be like, hey, what's up next? Or what can I work on next? They're like, oh, hey, I might be working on this thing. Yeah. And also then the higher you go in uh, the status of things, you have more freedom of when the next thing is like, no, I'm going to do this thing. Right. I feel like this is the next important thing. You can let people know, and if they trust you enough, they're like, yeah, that seems like a good idea. What kind of tools would you work in? So uh, for the gaming industry, Windows and C++ is pretty heavily used, yeah. uh, though other languages and systems are slowly creeping in. Rust, for example, is, is coming along pretty yeah. well, and that's it's doing a lot of interesting stuff. Um, so it's usually Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. Um, those are like the main things you would use Git for management. Though some some games also use uh, Perforce, which yeah. is one of the more commonly used as well. Um, and then um, any other tools that are connected to the job, but usually yeah. some sort of editor and compiler and IDE to program in. To oh. pre press the F5 and see the thing work. <laughs> yeah. Jumping back to, mm -hmm. to programming, though, because I studied, again, I use implementation mm -hmm. marks a lot, um, some form of programming. Like mm -hmm. I calculated yesterday when we were, we were talking on Friday, uh, uh, 17 years ago, mm -hmm. I was studying, 17, oh my god, I was studying, um, like it was PHP mm -hmm. and then ActionScript, ActionScript and Flash and Adobe Shockwave, Shockwave. whatever that program was actually yeah. used for. That was I don't uh, know. That's uh, similar to Flash. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Why we had it, have, I don't uh, know. Was it Director as well? No, never got that far. Mm -hmm. I think because I flunked because I'm really uh -huh. bad at programming. Um, I could do some basic database calls in PHP. Mm -hmm. Do some echo mm -hmm. this from mm -hmm. that database. Very couldn't do a blog. <laughs> um, but one thing that I always had problems with. One of the main reasons why I had such a hard time learning it is the basic like programming logic. Yeah. Like how to even approach code. Yes. And that was really hard for me. And that's a thing that is, it's hard to teach because um, you can teach some of the tools. Like if you're teaching someone to paint, you can say like, here's a brush, here are the, here are the colors, the oil or whatever, here's the canvas, um, here's a straight line down. Yep. Now we have a blue on the canvas. Because sometimes programming is taught that way of like, here's an output on the screen. Yeah. Or like, why is there blue on the canvas? I don't know. This is you did, now you can, now you can see the blue on the canvas. Yeah, that, I think that's as far as I got. Really. Yeah, like, put uh, that there. It works like yeah. that. Done. So, some people are more like like the more structured, logical, like could imagine the flow of the program and all that. Uh, some would like more abstract ideas. Some are like more visual. Uh, some like to just sit down and read a book. Like read everything like ah oh, now I get it. Yeah. So people are very different, and some methods work for some people. And um, the tricky thing is, you need to both teach someone like hey here's a tool here's how the tool works, uh, without them knowing why. Yeah. Well, you you kind of of course should teach them why you have this tool or why you have this system within the programming language or this feature within the programming language. Uh, I'm on the, the sense of you should teach someone uh, how something works by showing them a problem. Yeah. Like, oh, let's try this thing here. We can't do it, or it's really hard, or we would have to write a lot of code. Here's a feature that solves that problem for us, because now you have an emotional connection to the thing. Right. Like, print out 100 numbers. Like, okay. I can just say print one, print two, print three, like though this is silly. Or print out all the numbers divisible by five. You can just put whatever in. Uh, but then you have the problem of like, what if it's a million? You can't do that. Like, oh, and then someone would introduce you to the loop. Yeah. The loop will do the thing again and again, and you would tell it when to stop. Like, ah, now I see the connection between the, the wall I had in front of me and the feature that lets me get over that wall. Right. Um, so I think that's pretty important. And then what happens usually is people know about if statements, you would ask a question, 
you have loops, you're just asking a question again and again. You're gonna have variables where you store the data, like here's the number four in uh, how many people are in the room, which is wrong now, I see. <laughs> and uh, uh, so you, you would have these features, but then you'd ask the question, why? Why am I putting a number in a variable? Why am I asking a variable a question? And then the next step, what needs to happen is people need to solve a problem. And it needs to be something like they, they feel like they have control over this incredible machine in front of them. Yeah. Like here's this computing machine. Here's this incredible technological thing. And I control it. I can tell it what to do. Yeah. So I want it to do this thing for me. Either calculations or if it's uh, making a program or yeah solving a problem like an, an example of this is um i had a song stuck in my head which funnily enough this story is old enough that i've forgotten what the song was but anyway i had a song stuck in my head i'm going with this anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. and i couldn't remember the name of the song and but i knew there was a part of the the name that had um I think it had mountain in it, and it was pretty long. So I knew the, so the name of the, the song was something, something, mountain, something, something, and it was pretty long. And you can't Google that. So what do you do? And I had an idea where I knew if you went to the web version of Spotify and you searched mountain, it would give you a lot of the songs, but it wouldn't give you everything. Right. So what if I just held down, page down, and it would just keep loading? And then do that for like a couple of minutes. And then I would right click and I would see the HTML, my HTML background coming back there. And I would just copy the HTML. Then I would get a big list of all songs that have mountain in it. Now it's just a matter of extracting the title and then going through them myself. Right. And removing all song titles that were short or ended in mountain because I knew it didn't end in mountain. And, right. I, and I, yeah, I found it. But like it's, like, this is a, a silly example, because it's more of a, of a fun example, but it's, you have a problem in front of you. Yeah. You have this incredible machine that can do all sorts of computation of, of automation things for you. Make it work for you. So that's how, what I feel is the most important thing in programming is, sure, I can teach you what a, what a function is. Sure, I can, teach you what a, I can teach you a cool feature about template metaprogramming and yada, yada, but why? Why right. is it there? What is it doing for you? And what problem is it solving for you? If it's not solving a problem for you, don't worry about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll learn about it later, or maybe never. We don't know. I think it's so fascinating with you know, with programming. This is you you say that he's kind of creating a problem or solving a problem. These kind of abstractions, mm -hmm. because you see a lot of people when they talk about programming and talk about yeah, it's just it's so abstract for someone coming from the outside mm -hmm. just looking in. But it's still it's abstract. But at the same time, it's very hands-on, like mm -hmm. very practical in the end. It is. And it's a lot of the work we do is to prevent, prevent that I have to worry later. Like I'm yeah. writing this function to do this thing that will solve this problem for me or make this thing easier for me. But why are you writing in this, this way? This feels kind of weird. Wouldn't it be simpler if you just did these two things and then went away? But then my brain goes, yeah, but what if this? What if that? Like, what if the list is empty? What if the list is full? What if the list contains a name that is strange and I won't be able to handle it? See what I mean? So yeah. you have to um, get used to the edge cases. So the base case is usually pretty simple, yeah. but it's the what if, what if, what if. Yeah. What if someone logs in and owns a game that doesn't exist in the database? What do you do then? Yeah. But why doesn't it exist in the database? Why is it gone? Is it the wrong number? Yeah, so it's... What, what if someone owns a game that has accidentally been misconfigured? Like it's... Because I've been watching a lot of um, Tom Scott, mm -hmm. The Basics yeah. uh, series. Like, on really good YouTube. series. It's, a, it's, yeah. it's really, really cool in, in creating, like explaining mm -hmm. these kinds of problems. Yeah. Like why is a computer not 100% like correct all the time and it comes to numbers yeah. and time and time zones and dealing with different kinds of 
uh, just often very practical things like why does it crash when yep. this happens? Why yep. does this bug out? And it's just fascinating. Even though I can't say I remember 75% of what he was talking about, it's still it's really fascinating mm -hmm. just to listen to these kinds of things, just to learn the the mindset that mm -hmm. you approach up the, the code in. There, there's a talk by by uh, Feynman from like late in his career, probably. I remember because it's in color, so it's probably in, in like the late 70s, 80s, where he's, uh, he's doing a talk for uh, an audience. Like This is kind of when computers are starting to uh, become more known. And I love this example of, like, if you have a, uh, I think the, the example is you have a, a, a clerk that takes a document and needs to do something to the document and then find the place to put it and then puts it there. Right. And, it can, and the clerk can do this many documents per hour. And then someone comes to you and says, hi, I have a clerk that you can hire. Uh, and that clerk is uh, 10 times as fast, but that clerk can't do something. Right. Okay, then we can make a system that helps the clerk that doesn't know how to do something. Maybe a lookup, like maybe the clerk can't read. Like this is a... a and silly example, and he, he makes that silly example in the thing, but it's like the clerk can't read. Okay, then we have a lookup table of like how the symbols should look like and whatever, and then it keeps going. Like there's another clerk I can I can you can hire. This clerk is ten times as fast as the last one, but this clerk can't something. Yeah. And what you in the end made is you've made an algorithm, you made a system, because that's what a computer is. A computer is a very stupid machine but it's very accurate and it can take instructions very well. So if you know what, ask, ask it what to do, it will do those things. Yeah. So uh, it, was, it was an interesting example from that time because that's the, the, the connection that people have, is that filing systems and clerks and that stuff. Also why like folders are like these manila folders in Windows. Yeah. <laughs> like even though I don't deal with that kind of stuff, but still. Same with the, the save, the floppy, yep. the floppy disk. But uh, um, approaching it, because the more we talk about it, mm -hmm. um, it feels almost to me more intimidating in a way. You're making it a lot clearer, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, and it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. But to me, it feels almost more intimidating. I, I'm not sure if my brain would be able, maybe I'm, I'm not smart enough, but approaching it through all these steps as you're talking about and all these processes and abstractions, but then getting down to... Yes. Like, so how would you approach that basic programming? Again, quotation marks, it's the theme of the day. But yeah, it's, it's like creating a simple program and seeing that program run, seeing an output, yep. changing the output of that. Classic Hello World program? Or? Yeah, a little bit further, like reading from a file finding all the misspelled words because you have a, another file which is the dictionary yeah but if you can't find this word in that file then it's a misspelled word and print out all the misspelled words like it's like usually when you're learning you're creating toy examples um, but at least should look like examples that sound like a real world thing like oh I know what spell checking is yeah. uh, what if, but what if what if the dictionary is two billion words long? How do you search through that? And it's a lot of things you can go into, but there's no there's no learning everything. There is always more. Yeah. Like that's why even people who are very experienced in programming still go to conferences, still watch talks, still try to learn things because it just keeps going. Yeah. There's always something to learn, always something to be better, which is why I love this industry because there's always more, 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 more. Yeah. And there's always going to be someone who knows something like, ah, oh, that's a that's a cool idea. I didn't think about it that way. No. No. So I'm just saying like, no, there's no learning everything. No. This is a journey. You're just going to be on it for a while. Yeah. But if if I want to get started on that journey, if I was a, a mm -hmm. viewer now, feel like either I want to become a programmer uh, to start with, and that's why I'm yep. watching this interview, mm -hmm. or I'm watching this and like. This sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to look more into this. Are there any places, good places I could couldn't start? So what I should say first is you should, this is a journey. This is going to take a while um, and you are going to fail a lot and that's okay. That's the main thing. Like yeah. it's going to be, it's 
it's probably going to be frustrating. It's going to be, you're going to want a lot of help and that's okay. Yeah. And that's fine. And you should have uh, uh, some sort of support group or someone you can ask that can help you there. Um, since we're on this channel, I have Code School, season one yeah. and season two on the Ncon channel. Um, and it's then just, just about to push that. Yes, <laughs> I think we can go there. But what you like, and that is our way to start. Yeah. It's it's very basic. Like I go into like the absolute basic. Like what's a variable? What's a function? And we do it in two languages. So season one is is a more web based language. Season two is C plus um, plus. But what you should be is you should be an absolute like you should devour information. Yeah. You should learn from as many people as you can. And you should practice, 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 practice. Yeah. If there's, if if you would take only one thing from this is that you need to practice, yeah. almost basically every day. I think Code School uh, in general is really good because you're there with with Gabe, yep. um, and he's learning from scratch basically. Yes. Um, and as you say, there's two seasons, but it's really, again, having you sit down and explain what every step yeah, he's doing. He, is, he's is, asking back, so he's kind of yeah. he's kind of. A surrogate for for you there. Links in the description. The doobly do. Doobly do, yeah. I was not. <laughs> I had it in my mind, like I'm not gonna say doobly do, but I'm sorry. there we go. I'm sorry. In the doobly do. Anyway, code school. Yeah, because because he's kind of the 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 student, so he will ask the questions for you. Um, so he when he and he is not shy of like, hey, I don't get, it. I don't understand this, and I'll go through it again, and and he'll be like a few episodes later, like, oh, what was that again? And then we'll refresh it. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. But that, this is only just one way. It's a video. It's a live, it was a live stream, which we recorded. And you can watch that. Uh, and then, yeah, there are so many. There's a, um, there's a course by Kate Gregory. Um, I think it's on Plural site, which is very good. Um, there's a lot of books out there you can yeah. look at, depending on what language you want to learn. Um, and you should just you know, devour. Yeah. There's a community called Include, Include C++. They have a Discord, which is the T-shirt I'm wearing. Um, their Discord is wonderful. Uh, focused on C++, so if you want to learn that, do that. Yeah. Say hi. And if you want a lot of what I'm guessing are cringy programming jokes, they should look you up on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, bad bad jokes and bad programming and then bad programming jokes. Yeah, there there's a lot of it. A lot of it. I, I don't understand half of them. Same. But, but I smile because I realize they're funny. <laughs> So are there any, you mentioned program languages, like is there any particular one you should look at, especially if you're looking at the games industry, for example? So the games industry uh, is C++ and Rust is kind of coming up and C Sharp as well yep. with uh, Unity and, and, and other engines. Um, but be, in the beginning, don't focus too much on languages. Right. Uh, pick a language which you think might be good. Any of them could be good. Python, C Sharp, C++, C, Rust, JavaScript. It's all fine um, because you should learn about the fundamental ideas yeah. because all of them are like they're all talking to the same CPU. They're not doing any like a programming language is just a layer on top of the CPU of just different ways of sending a signal and asking the CPU to perform a command. Right. Um, and you can also there's a, we have a series on Ngon called Beyond FPS where we go into like what is a CPU, what is RAM. So if you want to know more about that as well. Links in the doobly do. Yes, uh, but don't focus too much on um, uh, what language. Uh, syntax will take a while to get used to, and that is just a way like learning another language or writing system. It's going to take a while, and that's we're just going to have to accept that. Um, but after a while, you realize that they all have variables in same some way, like they're storing data in some way. They're all asking questions about the data in some way. Yeah. How they write it is just different. They're all looping through data in different ways, even though some of them might do it in a very strange way, like functional programs, but they're still just going through a series of, of data. And they're all, the big thing is they're abstracting ideas. Like here's this idea of, here's this idea of uh, a bit of code that does something. It takes something in, it does some work and has an output. And all the languages have that in some way. So when when you get down to it, it's the same thing again and again, just written a bit differently. And some languages have some quirks, and you can look them up. And yeah, 
I think it's time for, it's been absolutely fantastic. I would sit here and just listen to you talk about programming. Thank you. For hours. Hours. It's been really good. For hours. I don't have my, George, get me my phone. <laughs> um, so let's have a fika. We have a fika? Yes. What are these called? I don't know. So this is... There was, I think it was like fika bread, like fika bread. Okay. On the... Some form of caramel thingy, right? I don't know. It's, it's probably like... 75% sugar. Mm -hmm. Let's. <laughs> I'm gonna get these. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Okay. They were good though. Yeah, they're very good. They were very good. Very mm -hmm. like classic. This is a fika thing you'd bring. Oh yeah. Like this is one of those when there's a, a smorgasbord of fika. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of those that will will be uh, finished early. Yeah, most definitely. They were really good. Mm -hmm. We're gonna finish those off camera, I think. Yes. We have an extra one yes. for someone in this room if they want it. But thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Amazing to have you. I, uh, I will yell in your ear every day. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining our Fika today. We put a bunch of useful links in the description, so make sure to check those out if you want to learn more. Also, remember to like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff you do on the internet. Until next time, take care.